Welcome to the HVAC Know-It-All Podcast. Recorded from a basement somewhere in Toronto, Canada. Your host and HVAC tech, Gary McCready, will take you on a deep dive into the industry discussing all things HVAC. From storytelling to technical discussion. Enjoy the show. Cool. So moving on to the next the next motor, um, capacitor start induction run motors. Now, Chris, give us a, a quick rundown on how this type of motor would work. Yeah, so this would be the more powerful cousin of the permanent split capacitor. So this will actually have a dedicated start winding, start capacitors, and a centrifugal switch to remove the start winding, uh, the start circuit after three or four seconds. So these have a ton of starting torque um, and, and then very low amperage, well-regulated speed. So you'll see these usually on pulley uh, driven applications. Cool. So centrifugal switch inside, where is that mounted on the shaft somewhere? So when the shaft starts spinning, yeah. um, it, it will be yeah, recognized. So typically mounted on the back end of the motor, inside the motor on the non-drive end, opposite the pulley end. Um, mm -hmm. There'll be a start switch and a centrifugal switch inside. The start switch will have a set of points and the centrifugal switch will be spring activated with speed. So when the get, motor gets up to about 75% of its full load speed, that centrifugal switch will remove the start winding from the circuit um, because the motor has been started in the right direction and has a ton of starting torque to get up to that speed. Nice. Now I've, I've actually never taken one of those apart to, to look at the centrifugal switch on that style of motor, but I have taken apart motors that have a centrifugal switch tied in as a safety to, or, or as an interlock for something else. Like um, there's one, like a, an induced draft motor I was working on last winter for a, a makeup air and the centrifugal switch had to make before the heating would come on um and i had to track it back to this because the diagram was bad and i took it apart and i found it, and i thought it was pretty cool how it worked um so but i've never taken it apart on this style of motor um, capacitor start induction run but i have on the smaller type one so i know exactly what you're talking about and how it works um but centrifugal switch basically just means that it needs to see a, a rotation before it will close its contacts, right? Exactly. So when the motor is stopped and at rest, the contacts are actually closed and that start winding is in the circuit. And then when it opens up to pretty close Oh, yes, pull, yes, yes. It'll, it'll yeah. open up the circuit and remove the start winding. Yeah, 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 correct. I, I was thinking again uh, along the lines of it being an interlock where it starts open and, and then closes. But yeah. Yeah, in your case, it would have been the opposite probably. Yeah. So, you know, the downside of these would be you can't control the speed on these types of motors. Obviously, we can't vary the speed down to 50% because then it's going to stay on the start winding and never reach that centrifugal force to get into the run winding. The other so, downside with these is there's more moving parts. Um, so the centrifugal switch and the stationary switch can wear out as well as the start capacitor. So because the permanent split capacitor motor doesn't have any of those, they do typically last longer. I see. Okay. So, I mean... Is a capacitor start capacitor run similar? It's exactly the same motor. It would just have a run capacitor in the run winding, and that would make the motor more efficient. Um, it would bring that power factor closer to unity and make, have the motor run cooler. Um, typically, you don't see a run capacitor in that style of motor until you get to probably a one and a half horse or a two horse. Everything under that wouldn't require a run capacitor. I see. Okay. So, and you've talked about power factor a couple times now. Now there's some meters out in the market that can monitor or measure motor power factor. So one is what you're, you're aiming for when it comes to that, right? Yeah, you want, Unity would be perfect. Um, the manufacturers would have to spend extra money to get at that to Unity. So typically they make it as good as the industry needs. Um, in three phase motors, that might be um, 0.9, in single phase motors, it would be a lot less because they use a lot less energy. So the less close to unity that a motor is, close to one, uh, the less efficient it's going to be. Gotcha. Okay. So a motor that's close to one is not going to be a big deal. But if we're like 0.5 power factor, then we're probably going to, on our way out, the motor's probably failing, sort of. Yeah. It, that's going to be really inefficient, depending if how, that's how it was built. In some sheet mm -hmm. pull motors, that would be normal, um, but they're very small, draw, draw very low power, and 
uh, a 0.5 power factor might be all the manufacturer needs to, to build in that way. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of the next motor that we were going to talk about, uh, according to um, the rundown and, and the way the article sort of panned out. Shaded pole motor. What what is a, a shaded pole? Mm -hmm.